you know, these recent elections um, really revealed a whole, whole lot. And um, and we've tried to talk about some of those things, you know, not so much just the, the, the statistics and the numbers of who's voting for who and all of that. But, you know, in times of great pressure and stress and all of that is usually when people begin to really reveal themselves and who they really are. Uh, one of the areas that we really focused on, I mean, you know, if you've been following our platform is the enormous amount of attack on black men and, um, you know, for black men who did not choose to vote for Kamala and or just, you know, black men who just simply had questions. And, you know, this was unlike any other elections that I've lived through or seen in my life um this was really really something and one of the things that they kept throwing at us over and over again was this accusation that if you don't vote for her that you're a misogynist you're someone who basically have some bone to pick with women you don't like women you hate women you know you despise women you don't want to see a woman in power and all of this stuff and they were trying to portray men in general particularly black men as if we just have this disdain for our own women black women and you know besides the fact that the person that they were um elevating to this to be this ultimate litmus test was in fact not even a black woman herself she was indian um you know it just was really disheartening to see you know how quickly people were able to pivot and just portray all black men as just having this disdain for black women and while it may seem a little bit over the top to make this comparison i think it's i think you can go there um you know some of this i think for me personally, it sounded a little bit, you know, like the same accusations, like people like, well, you know, he was a young man, Emmett Till, you know, he was accused of just simply glancing at a woman and whistling at her. And so this white woman, she automatically uh, read that as he's being over aggressive, I'm under threat. And then of course, you know, you know how that story ended. And so, again, like I said, it's not nowhere, it's not in full comparison, but black men have a long history of being falsely accused of being uh, overly aggressive or over the top or just having this disdain for women, period. And it's something that we have had to fight against for ever since we've been in this country. And so here we are in 2024, we're, you know, it's not just the white women that were saying this, but it was our own black women who were making these accusations. I mean, all over social media and mainstream media, um, and it wasn't just black women, but you also had black men who were repeating these same false accusations that, you know, that black men just internally, we just have this hatred towards women. And it was just, I don't know, it was just something in me just said enough. I'm not going to take this. I'm not going to take this sitting down. You know, I am going to address it. And that's, that we did on this platform. Now, on this platform, on our channel, you know, our focus is not so much talking about problems and pointing out just the bad things in, in society, but we also want to focus on solutions. How do we address these things and not just address them, but how do we fix it? And if you just take a look through our channel here, you'll find that there are plenty of videos where we actually meticulously take the time and we address these things. Sometimes we pull on experts, you know, because we don't know everything here on this platform, but we will pull on people who do have more knowledge, you know, in these certain areas. And how do we address these things, you know, when it comes to our health, when it comes to mental health, when it comes to, uh, you know, if someone is dealing with abuse or whatever it is, you know, um, we try to reach out to people who do have the skills set and the know-how 
on how to get out of these situations. But unfortunately, in all of my years being a content creator, not just here on YouTube, but you know, back in the days in the early 2000s when I had my own blog and that was doing very well, um, you know, as long as I was just stuck to just talking about the problems, you know, people were okay with that. But, you know, the moment I stepped into, okay, this is how we fix these things. That's when viewership tend to go down. And, um, and it's no different than today. This is the same pattern that I see today. So in this video, we're going to talk about, you know, everybody has talked about the fact, you know, that they believe that men have this thing inside of us that we just hate women, you know, particularly black men. And we don't like to see a woman succeed in any way, shape or form. But there's if we're going to talk about that, then we need to talk about the whole situation. What starts this cycle? And that's what we're going to get into in this video. It's going to be very simple. Um, but the problem is, and I guess the question I should say is, how many people are going to be willing to accept these truths? So let's get into it. So one of the things that popped up to me as I was just kind of preparing for this video, I said, wow, I remember it was, this has been, this is a trend that has been uh, media, mainstream media has been tracking for some time. And, and the trend I'm talking about are the rate of female teachers who have been sexually abusing their students. And I remember back in the days when I had a blog and that was like my main platform that I was using, I began to track this stuff where it was like pages and pages. I would go to Google News and literally it would be pages and pages of stories of women teachers, female teachers who were being caught abusing their students. And I thought it was just me noticing this. And so I started tracking it and I started doing many multiple posts on this. I was like, is anybody else noticing this? And I mean, it was a lot. And, it, and the thing is, the trend never stopped. It just kept going. And um, and so now today it's still going on. And and here's another article. Um, this is in Daily Mail inside the twisted minds of female teacher pedos. Sex predator expert reveals what drives these women, basically. And um, and this article was done back in um, early this year in 2024. Um, here's another one. Um, this article here, 500 female teacher students, um, sex offenders, 500. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of chill here for a moment and I'm just going to scroll through. So you can take your take a gander at these things. 500 female students. Now, if that doesn't raise any alarms, I don't know what does. 500. Think about this for a second. 500 female teachers who over this period of time were caught having sexual relations with teach with with students. 500. Now, you would think that somebody would take not only take note of this, but there would actually be laws constructed that would call this out specifically for what it is. If this was 500 men doing this, they would have called it out with no problem. But 500, at least female teachers who have been caught having sexual relations with their students. Now, this is a very interesting article here that I'm going to read to you. This is uh, Lessons to Learn Female Educators Who Sexually Abuse Their Students. Now, this is an article that was done back in 2010. It was written by Sarah G. West and Susan Hatters Friedman. Um, both of them, they're fully licensed, and this was in Psychiatric Times. Okay, so two women wrote this who specialize in studying things like this. And we're just going to read just a tiny bit of what they discovered. And I'm telling you, this is going to probably blow your mind here. So let me get to that part here. Here we go. All right. So this is under the section called the offenders. This is women account for fewer than 10 percent of all arrests made for sexual offense offenses. It is strongly suspected that this figure represents an underestimate of the actual number of crimes that occur. For example, 60 to 80 percent of men sexually abused during their childhood identified a female 
perpetrator. 60 to 80 percent. Female sex offenders are often white, have a history of substance abuse, and have been victims of sexual abuse themselves. They often commit the crimes in their 20s and 30s. And then it goes on into some really fascinating details about this and why it is what it is. And again, these are psychiatrists, so, you know, they, they really take the time and go into the technicals of all this. But if you want to understand, okay, so you want to make this accusation that men are inherently misogynist and we just don't like women and all this other stuff, then, okay, let's take a look at well number one that's false and that's not true because all men do not fall in that category but for the ones that are because i'm not denying that doesn't that exists because it does but for the ones that are my question to you is are you willing to dive into finding out why they are the way they are because what we just read there is that between 60 and 80 percent of men who have been who, who claim to be um, sexually abused it was done at the hands of a woman and so when you read about the impact the psychological impact of abuse you know on men and women they do it does vary between men and women when you look at the genders but it also varies in how the child responds to that you know over time some ch children they internalize it while others they take it out on the on the opposite sex it varies but it it is in fact a contributing factor to how men view women and so when you look at this this is very alarming and at the, but at the same time and unfortunately this is the part of the equation that a lot of people simply don't want to talk about because it's not convenient. So instead, we bury this stuff. We ignore the fact that these individuals, these precious children, you know, are being um, stamped for the rest of their lives at the hands of women who, for whatever reason, feel like they can have their way with these young men. This is a real, real trend, and it's something that definitely needs to be addressed and it, it's, it bothers me to see how people can take something very serious like we, what we're talking about now and trivialize it just to score political points. And then once now that the, you know, the elections are over, well, we just dust our hands off and just move on to the next thing. Well, I'm not dusting my hands off of this. This is a very serious thing. And it's something that if, if, if we're going to be serious about addressing this particular issue why do we have some men in our society that have a dim look on women you know or why is it that we have some of these other things we need to be prepared to go all the way and address these things at the root because if we're not willing to do that then what's the point what's the point of bringing these things up in the first place and i think we need to stop that and we need to be serious and we need to be focused on not only addressing these issues, but coming up with real solutions on how do we fix it? How do we repair it? And most importantly, how do we bring the people who cause these things in the first place to justice? Because they definitely, that definitely needs to happen. Oh, and here's another article I forgot to mention. Um, this is in Fox News. This was back in October of 2022. At least 269 K to 12 educators arrested on sex, child sex crimes in the first nine months of 2022. Now, if you go through this list, this is a combination of men and women, you know, in this on this particular one. Um, you know, however, when you look at those other ones, it's predominantly women. So the thing I want people to understand is this and um, is that real men, straight men who have good character, we're not interested in the name calling. We're not interested in all the other dramatics that you find, you know, on social media. Look at, you know, and just making fun and laughing and all that stuff, you know, and you know, all that stuff. I mean, we like to have fun and all that. But what I'm talking about is when, when accusations like this are brought up, these are very, very serious accusations because it strikes us at the very core of who we are as men 
And one of the things we do as men is that we protect, you know, and um, and we defend, you know, when and that comes to our, our our wives, our women and our children. And so when you have that the, the very people that you're supposed to be defending up making these accusations um, that which are false and saying that you just intrinsically just don't like us or you hate us or whatever. Well, that's something that we should take very seriously and take a very close look at and which what we're doing in this video. So again, thank you so much for tuning into this video. You guys take care and we'll be talking again soon.